God bless you, and thanks for tuning in to our radio broadcast featuring our latest series, Cults, Where Do They Come From? Part one is the introduction, where the question is raised, should we seek vindication or love for our enemies? You make the choice. Now, before we take a look at various cults, it's imperative to understand some foundational principles, including revisionist history, systematic theology, the nature of God, plus a few others. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And that is Ephesians 4, verses 13 through 15. What's the obstacle to believers becoming unified? Supremacists, white and black, whose legalistic views are more concerned with vindication than with God's highest expression, love. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and here's the common English uh, version. Now faith, hope, and love remain. These three things, and the greatest of these is love. Now, that was a look at part one where we raised the question, should we seek vindication or should we love our enemies? Well, the Bible lets us know that the greatest uh, attribute that we can have is love. Not vindication, but love. So let us slide on now to part two. Cults, where do they come from? And the foundational principle we'll look at principles we'll look at uh, include revisionist history and systematic theology. Now, revisionist history carries both positive and negative connotations. Each has its own entry. Let's look at um, a first example of his historical revisionism, which is the reinterpretation of orthodox views on evidence, motivations, and decision-making processes, processes surrounding a historical event. And number two, historical revisionism. Historical revisionism, also known in this case as negationism. Negationism can either be the legitimate scholastic re-examination of existing knowledge about an historical event or the distortion of the historical record such that certain events appear in a more or less favorable light or alternatively in a particularly bad light. So that's negationism. Okay. Now let's talk about systematic theology. It's an important tool in helping us to understand and teach the Bible in an organized manner by dividing theology into systems that explain its various areas. For example, theology proper or paterology is the study of God the Father. Number two, Christology is the study of God the Son the Lord Jesus Christ. Pneumatology is the study of God, the Holy Spirit. Bibliology, bibliology is the study of the Bible. Soterology is the study of salvation. Ecclesiology is the study of the church. Eschatology is the study of 
the end times. And angelology is the study of angels. Uh, Christian demonology is the study of demons from a Christian perspective. <clears throat> and number 10 here is Christian anthropology is the study of humanity. 11 is hermetiology is the study of sin. Soteriology, soteriology, mm -hmm. ecclesiology, yeah. Let us now, that would conclude part two. Let us now move to part three. Cults, where do they come from? And in this part, we will look at other theological divisions. In other words, there are more systems of theology that we can study. For example, biblical theology is the study of a certain book or books of the Bible and emphasizing the different aspects of theology it focuses on. For example, the Gospel of John is very Christological, Christological since it focuses so much on the deity of Christ. John 1.1 1, 1 and 14, verse 14. John 8, verse 58. John 10, verse 30. John 20, and verse 28. Number two, historical theology is the study of the doctrines and how they have developed over the centuries of the Christian church. Number three, dogmatic theology is the study of the doctrine of certain Christian groups that have systematized doctrine. For example, Calvinistic theology and dispensational theology. Okay, number four, contemporary theology is the study of doctrines that have developed or come into focus in recent times. So those are a few more examples of systems of theology. And that will conclude part three. So this is going pretty fast, so let's move right on into part four. Cults, where do they come from? And now we'll uh, talk about misinterpretations and the syndromes they cause. Hermeneutics is the theory and methodology of text interpretation, especially the interpretation of biblical text, wisdom literature, and philosophical text. Hmm initially applied to the interpretation or exegesis of scripture. For example, white supremacists interpret Adam as white man and that people of color are the beast of the field. Hmm. The beast of the field. Okay. Why do some whites fall for such a distortion? Well, to feel superior, which can be a reflection of insecurity, often resulting in the thirst for power, particularly over any people who are deemed to be threatening somehow. You know, the, the old seesaw syndrome, right? Where you got to pull somebody down in order to make yourself look, you know, better, more favorable or, or whatever like that. So that's one uh, syndrome. But let, let me continue. However, the name Adam in the Hebrew language is Adam, meaning human. Coupled with the definite article, it becomes the human. Adam's root is not attributed to the somatic root for man. Rather, Adam is linked to the triliteral root, meaning red or fair or handsome as a masculine noun Adam means man or mankind usually in a collective context as in humankind the noun Adam is also the masculine form of the word Adama 
which means ground or earth. It is related to the words Adam, bread, or Admani, Rudy, and Dom, which is blood. According to a number of observers, the word Adam derives from Sanskrit word Adima, that's A D I M A, meaning progenitor, first, primitive in Sanskrit. Black supremacists, including some African Americans with academia, within academia, I'm sorry, within the academic circles, contain, contend that the levels of melanin in dark skin naturally enhance, enhances uh, intelligence and emotions, psychic and spiritual sensitivity. Wow. They misconstrue Job 30 30 to be about melanin when actually it's about disease and let me uh, get that verse and read it for you Job 30 30 where it reads my skin is black upon me and my bones are burnt with heat remember Job was being afflicted by Satan. And melanin is not an affliction. So Job wasn't talking about black skin in terms of the color. He was talking about an affliction that Satan had hit him with. Why do blacks fall for such a distortion? Again, vindication for perhaps our slavery in America. Yet, if Africans are the inventors of civilization and slavery, who committed gruesome atrocities against their slaves, black supremacists are like NBA ref who missed the first foul by a player, but is emphatic in calling the second foul on the opponent. The second foul syndrome. You've seen that if you watch any NBA game, uh, a guy would, used to, back in the day, would probably would push, you know, Shaq. And if Shaq retaliate, he get called for the foul. But the first guy didn't get called. And in the, from a historical context, sometimes we can look back in history and see the second foul, but we don't see what led to uh us as blacks being put in the situation that we've been in. Now, some more blacks are coming around in their understanding uh, that we were, according to Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, it's particularly 28th chapter, talks about um, the enslavement of God's people. And so some understand that to be talking about the slavery that blacks would endure particularly here in America so we don't see if we were to follow if we were to fall in line with that uh, that particular interpretation of Deuteronomy we tend to overlook the part what led to our enslavement which is what the point of this discussion is it's the second foul sin we see the evil being done to us but we don't see the evil that we in order to be be placed in the situation that we were in with slavery all right so we we dealt with that pretty well let us now slide into part five again we're going pretty pretty fast here all right cults where do they come from is the title of this series that you're hearing from the seekers of unlimited life ministry and i'm your host minister les barrett and in this part part five we want to talk about typology typology all right let us uh, define it first typology 